Okay, welcome to example five. This is a very interesting problem. Uh, we're actually going to be doing this example as a lab. Uh, so you really want to particularly pay attention to how we do this. Uh, a ballistic pendulum is basically a system that is used to measure the speed of a fast moving projectile. It's a great problem that utilizes both conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. So what we have is a bullet that's fired into this wooden block. And as the bullet enters the block, it becomes embedded within the block and then the block is able to swing upwards there's these the string and so that's why it's called a ballistic pendulum so this whole block and bullet system now slide up to a certain height h so what we're trying to do is to try to find the um, the speed of the bullet v1 initial in terms of the mass of the block the mass of the bullet and height h or we could use also use this length l and I'll talk about that in a minute at the end of the problem. So now this problem typically has some mistakes that people make because they forget to look at this in three stages. You have stage one right here. This is before the bullet enters into the block. So we have the bullet moving along here and this block at rest. We have stage two which is the bullet becomes embedded within the block and now the block and bullet system is starting to move up move actually to the right with this final velocity but because it's attached to the strings it starts to move upwards and reach this final stage stage three so what you really need to do is look at what happens between stage one to two and then from stage two to three because if you try to go from one to three you can't use just conservation momentum or you can't use just conservation of energy. So the typical mistake that someone might make is like, oh, well, I'm just going to use the kinetic energy of this bullet, 1 half mv1 initial squared. And that's just going to be equal to this potential energy at number 3, which is little m, big M times g times h. And what you'll find is this is wrong. And the reason why it's wrong is because when the bullet enters this block, it loses energy. It loses energy as it slides into here. And so there's this energy that's lost due to friction. You feel that bullet afterwards. It's going to be hot. So you can't use conservation of energy from 1 all the way to 3. You have to look at from 1 to 2. Yes, there is something indeed that is conserved, but that's the momentum. The momentum initially equals the momentum finally. And then from 2 to 3, Yes, in this case, there is something conserved, and that is energy. So the energy here from number two to number three is conserved. But you cannot go from one to three and say the energy is conserved. And you cannot even go from one to three and say momentum is conserved, because this block starts to move upwards, and there's an external force on the system. So be very careful as you interpret this problem to make sure that you visualize it in three different stages. So. What we'll do is we'll start off with from picture one to picture two. That's the momentum initially equals momentum finally. Now the momentum initially would be the momentum of the bullet, which is little m v1 initial, plus the momentum of the block, which is big M times that velocity, two initial, which is actually zero. So this whole term will go to zero. And that's equal to the combined momentum. Remember, that's what we call a completely or perfectly inelastic collision. So we have little m, that's the mass of the bullet, plus the big M, the mass of the block, times V final. So I'll just rewrite that. V, m, V1 initial equals little m, big M, times V final. And what we need to do is get rid of V final. And that's going to come from looking at stage 2 to 3. So from stage 2 to 3, energy is conserved, okay, but not momentum. In picture 2, we have this block and bullet system that is moving to the right. And let's assume that this position right here is the lowest height, so no potential energy, but definitely there's kinetic energy. So we have that kinetic energy, 1 half, little m, plus the big M. That's the combined mass of the bullet and the block times v final squared. Now, I know there's initial here and there's v final. But remember that the final velocity from 1 to 2 is now becoming the initial velocity from 2 to 3. 
and that's going to be equal to the potential energy at 3 because the velocity at the end at stage 3 is 0. It stops when it gets to that highest position. So we have that combined mass little m big M times G times little h. And you can see that these combined masses cancel out and we get V final squared equals 2g h. Now what we could do is then substitute that over into here. Well, let's actually substitute the square root of that actually because that's what v final is. And we get little m v1 initial equals little m big M times the root of 2g h. And then we sub solve for the initial velocity of the bullet and that will be the following expression. And that's what's shown in the bottom if you look down at your equations and the solution here, which is shown right down over here. Now, to do part B, this was part A, part B is, well, let's substitute numbers in. So V1 initial equals, okay, and the little mass is, um, 5 grams, so that's 5.00 times 10 to the power of negative 3 in kilograms, plus the mass of the block is 1 kilogram, and that is being divided by little mass, 5.00 times 10 to the power of negative 3 kilograms, and then the square root of 2 times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times the height that it became elevated, which was 5 centimeters, we're going to write that as 0 0.05 meters, and plug this into your calculator and you will get 199 meters per second. So this is one method that you could find the velocity of a bullet uh, not from directly measuring it from like projectile motion or something like that. So there is a, also a part here to find out how much of that energy is lost. So the thermal energy as they call it or the change in kinetic energy divided by the kinetic energy initial is the percent lost and that would be taking that one half little mass big a ma mass and v final squared minus the kinetic energy of the bullet little m v1 initial squared I haven't put in the other one because the big block wasn't moving initially so this is going to give me the change and kinetic energy divided by the initial kinetic energy which is that bullet kinetic energy one half mv1 initial squared and we can go ahead and put those numbers into our calculator and we should get on the top we'll get uh, basically negative 98.49 joules and the kinetic energy initially was 98 point nine eight joules so if you divide these two out you'll get a difference of ninety nine point five percent lost so quite a bit of that energy is lost in that uh, that ballistic pendulum problem and you'll notice that if you pick up the bullet it's going to be very very hot and so most of that energy is lost due to thermal energy so that's it for the ballistic pendulum problem